it's me, Nim Sony. Welcome back to another VR tutorial video. This is part 2. If you haven't watched part 1, have a look at that. Go through the basic stuff. Again, this is going to be another basics tutorial just about the inputs for VR. In the last video, I went through the basic concepts of getting tracking into the Unity build um, without using any prefabs. Very simple stuff using the most basic code that you can actually do for the sake of just understanding where that code comes from and how it's sort of interfacing with VR. In this one, we're doing exactly the same thing, except I'm going to be doing so with the inputs. Now, we're back in the same scene that we made in the last video, so we want to open up the two scripts that we were looking at and working with in the last video. The VR rig being our first script, which is the one that we were working on. You'll notice I've done a little bit of change in layout as well here. Hopefully this will this will help me to just sort of make the um, make the video a little easier for myself. And of course the OVR input script. Load that up because that one gives us a nice explanation of what's going on and where we're pulling functions from. What I want to do in this video is simply have a look at when we're pressing buttons and moving an input uh, axis on the controllers. Now I'm using the left hand uh, controller. Uh, because that's a little bit easier for me to access while I'm holding my Oculus Rift. And that's something that I should mention before we get onto this. I'm just going to set this nice and uh, neat again. The actual Oculus system, the tracking and um, inputs for controllers are only active while the Oculus Rift is moving around and has the sensor active, which means while it's on your head. In my case, I like to develop without having to constantly put the rift on my head, so I do cover the little sensor with my thumb. I believe there is a tool that uh, Oculus provides that allows you to leave it always on, but I don't really need that, I can just cover the, the sensor with my thumb. So when I'm playing this and when I'm running this, I'm going to be holding a controller in my left hand and the rift in my right hand. And this is something that you'll also notice when you're actually, you know, using the rift. Your sensors, the lights on top of your sensors will only activate once your rift starts moving. Once the rift has stopped moving for a little while, the sensors will switch off. Therefore, even though your controllers will be rotating, their position tracking will be removed. They won't work as long as your rift is sitting completely still. You have to have your rift on to have your touch controllers tracking properly. Just wanted to let you know that. So when you're testing this stuff, it, it kind of, you need to know whether your buttons are working properly or whether it's just that you you haven't activated them, ac activated your controllers. You're not you know you're not holding your rift. Anyways, the way I'm going to handle this is we're going to be looking at some basic booleans because I don't want to do any actual functionality in the game or do any sort of debug stuff and then have to look through the listing. As you can see, the OVR manager has a lot of stuff thrown into the debug section. So all I'm going to do is provide ourselves with some public variables, a public boolean which of course is public pool, for uh, let's say the first button, which in my case is going to be the X button. For you, it could be the A. In fact, I think I'm going to do that actually. I'll probably stick with the primary controller, which is going to be our right hand. So we're going to call it input A. So that's our A button. I'm going to do another one for the B button, which is another Boolean. And then I'm going to have a third one for a vector two, which is two axes. And that is for our joystick. Now the joystick on our right stick is going to be, on our right hand is going to be our right stick. So we'll just call it that. Oops, I added an extra semicolon. So now we've got three variables that will show up in our Unity editor. And of course, when we press the buttons, we'll just, you know, activate those variables. And that's about it. Nice and easy. And that gives us an understanding of when we're actually, you know, functionally working. That's all it ma that matters. We don't care about any actual game functionality right now. We just want to know that we're accessing the inputs properly. Over to our OVR input script. Let's have a look through this nice cool stuff. The first thing you'll see in there is actually the buttons and row button. Now I'll explain that in a moment. Let's do a quick search for the functionality, which is get and then open bracket. And that, that's just because I know how the scripts are written in, uh, in OVR. And they're very similar to the way that the Unity input system works. Now the way Unity input system works, when it comes to buttons, they provide you with three functions. Get button, get button down, and get button up. 
The exact same thing applies to, to Oculus OVR, except it's even simpler than that. They've actually got all of the types in the same function, and that function is get. So if you're using the get function, you'll actually have booleans, you'll have vectors, and you'll have floatings, uh, floating points as well. So float. Very, very simple. You don't even have to change the function name. And you can see here, we've got two get functions highlighted with a boolean. One access is button and one access is row button. Let's have a look at what those two actually are. Back to the top of our script, we can see the two enums, one which is button and one which is row button. Let's look at row button first. You can see that the names that were provided are A, B, X and Y, the same names that you'll find on the controllers. And like I mentioned in the last video, with the touch controllers, there is left touch, right touch and then just touch, which is the general system version. And the general one allows the system itself to determine which is the primary active controller. So if the player is only playing with one hand and you only have one button in your game, you know, the, the system can say, well, we'll use that button instead of the other hand. That works by using the button system rather than raw button. You see, when you look at the button section here, button enums, we've got one, two, three, and four. That's because rather than stating specifically that you want the A button or the B button or the X or Y button, which are specifically on one of the sided controllers, you can make your game completely ambidextrous. So we can use the button one, which is not actually a button on your controllers. There's no one button. This isn't a Nintendo controller. <laughs> this is going to be the A button, but only if your right hand is active. If your left hand is your primary and active controller, and that's the only one you're using, then button one will be the X button. You see how it can be generic and you can work with either controller. We're not going to do that because we are working with two controllers in general. So I'm just going to work with the row button and that allows us to just sort of work with uh, a sort of specific button that we know is always going to be active. So we're going to be using row button and we're going to use A or B. Again, we're just dealing with the standard enums and stuff. So it's exactly the same as we were dealing with before with our controller tracking. Make a new line in our script and we're going to set our variable here, input A to our button press. So OVR input dot get, as we know, it's always the get function. I'm going to close that up. And then what are we accessing? We're accessing the enum row button. So OVR input dot row button dot A. Very, very simple stuff. Very, very easy. Let's save that and switch over. Let Unity do its job. And then grab our camera rig. Highlight the camera rig, make sure you're highlighting it because we're going to have a look here in the inspector and we'll see our three variables that we've just created. Input A, input B and right stick. Obviously right stick is a two axis variable, so we've got X and Y. Let's run the game and you can see we've got our head tracking moving around, as you can see. We've got our controller, which is now active and you can see it moving. And now when I press the A button, if you have a look at that checkbox, while I'm pressing the button down, you can see the checkbox is active. When I let go, the checkbox is inactive. Did I just say checkbox? Checkbox is what I was supposed to say. So active, inactive, and you can hear my button being pressed. That's me pressing it. That's me releasing it. You can see when the checkbox activates and deactivates. We're going to do the same thing now with the input B, which is our B button. Except instead of using the get function, we're going to use get down. And that works in exactly the same way as Unity's get button down. So if you've used that before, you'll know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a toggle. Switching back over to the script. Now we're going to do a little bit of a different way of handling it. We're going to use an if function. So if and in the brackets, we're going to use our input check. So there we go, In OVR input, oops, let me type that correctly, dot get down. Notice how it's not get button down like Unity's is. And that's because, like I said, it doesn't work on buttons alone. It works for every type that we have ac ac accessible to us. Wow, that was so hard to say. So get down, and again, 
we're going to do exactly the same thing as before. OVR input dot row button dot b. Now that if function is only going to activate for the very one frame, the very first frame of us pressing the B button down. Once we've released it, nothing happens. And then when we press it again, obviously that press is going to activate the if function for that very first frame that we press the button down. While the button is pressed, nothing's happening. So it stays false. It activates for a single frame only. In that single frame, all we want to do is swap our input B uh, to the opposite, to its inverse. So input B equals not input B. That allows us to take input B and if it's set to true, we'll switch it to false. If it's set to false, we'll switch it to true. Very, very easy stuff. Let's have a look at how that works. Click. So here we are, once again running. Grab my controller and holding the A button, releasing the A button, you can see the checkbox switches on and switches off. Now with the B button, when I press it, it switches on. Releasing it does nothing. Pressing it again switches it off and releasing it does nothing. Click, 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 click. Whereas the A button, hold, let go, hold, let go. You can see how we're just working with the little simple functions and it's given us proper game functionality. The B button, which we're using, which is toggling, switching click and click. We can use that click functionality for something like a jump. Whereas holding a button, obviously we use that the same way we would use, for example, a grip or a run button, for example. Let's end the game there. And one more thing to do. Switch over to our script. So now we're going to do the same thing with our right stick. Again, right hand, because that's the control I'm using. Switch over to our OVR input. And now, again, we're going to look for the get function, except this time I'm going to keep searching. So if you look over here, you can see that we've got a Boolean get button, then get button, or row, get row button. And then we have touch and row touch. This is for the capacitive sensors. When you're touching the actual button or uh, the trigger or, or the analog stick, that will activate. Again, it has a raw touch version of it. And then we've got a near touch. This is something that you sort of may, may or may not have known. So the actual touch functionality on the, on the Oculus Touch controllers is not purely just when you're touching the actual button, but there's also a near touch. So it's actually a capacitive sensor and it, it sort of has an analog value to itself, even though you're not actually accessing a, a capacitive analog value, you're just getting some booleans. And then after that, you can see axis 1D, which is a float. Same thing with row axis 1D. We always have a row version of the same thing. And then the next one, which is vector 2. You can see that we're always using the same function name. The actual function name is get. Super duper easy because you don't have to remember that you're using the correct type. It just gives you the correct type for whatever you're accessing. In this case, we're accessing a vector 2. So let's do exactly this and set our right stick to that. Right stick equals OVR input, same as before, get. Now in the get function, we're not accessing a row button this time. So OVR input dot. This time we're going to access an axis 2D or in our case, a row axis 2D. So let's have a search for that. We just want the enum. And you can see here, row axis 2D, left thumbstick, left touchpad, if your controller has one. Remember, this is for multiple devices. It's not just the Rift. We also have the Oculus Go. We also have the Oculus Quest and other devices that may have touchpads, touchpads and remote controls and whatnot. Right thumbstick and right touchpad. All we want is the right thumbstick. So all exactly the same stuff as before. Row axis, whoops, row axis 2D, two dimensions, dot, right thumbstick. Super duper easy stuff. Switch over to our game, press play, and let's have a look at the final bit. Again, we've got tracking. We've got button functionality, switching on and off. And now we've got the right stick. And you can see how the values have changed as soon as I start moving the stick. 
When I let go, nothing. If I move to our left, we'll get a near one value, a near minus one value on the x on the x axis. Right, we get near one. Down, we get near minus one on the y. Up, we get near one on the y. Very, very simple stuff. We can use this exactly how we use a normal joystick on a normal game. At this point, you can pretty much create a normal character rig and start working with it as if you're not in VR. Super duper easy stuff. It just works as if you're working with Unity completely without any extra plugins. Super duper easy. This is what I love about the Oculus OVR system. It works so well in the way that you're so used to already. You don't really need to think about it being VR at this point when you're dealing with inputs. There is one more thing you'll notice. When you scroll a little bit lower from the enum for row axis 2D in the script file, and you'll see that there is an open VR button. That's because Oculus OVR has full cross-platform com cross compatibility with OpenVR. You can actually tell that when you go over to Unity, go into your Oculus folder and have a look in the third-party folder in VR, you'll see that the entire OpenVR API is available to us in the Oculus OVR. So if you wanted to, you wanted to not use Oculus and you wanted to use the Steam VR uh, stuff, you can do that without even using the plugin. You can literally use OpenVR from Oculus. In fact, if I activated OpenVR like I deactivated in the last video and run this through OpenVR, the actual system would track properly. The buttons would work because Oculus has cross-platform cross compatibility and this OVR input script actually functions correctly like that. I would not suggest doing that Again, you are. it is preferable to actually learn the basics of each script and, and each style. Um, and that pretty, pretty much ends this video. I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of how you can access the actual functions that are there, how you get access to, to find out what is available to you. And this OVR input script, honestly, have a read through all of the scripts that are in the VR script folder. In, in Oculus and you'll see so much useful stuff in there. And again, the same thing with OpenVR if, if you wanted to use the OpenVR API. There's so much amazing stuff in there. Just like I said, like like the near touch and stuff like that, which, which you don't always know just by, you know, you, you start working with your, your Oculus, you didn't know that you have these functions on your buttons, on your controllers. Anyways, that ends this video. I'll probably make another one after this about just sort of the basics and, and basics of movement and character movement in VR and how it differs from normal games and of course uh, things like basic collisions and stuff like that. You have to be aware when your player's moving, they're moving two different things at the same time. One is the camera tracking, the other is the entire camera rig which moves the controllers fakely, so from your script. That ends this video, thanks very much for watching, sorry everything's a little bit long but I just want to make sure that people really, really understand where these functions and stuff is coming from. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.